Talking about cutting the cord to save money on your monthly bills, you are not alone. Just last year, more than 4.7 million Americans ended their TV service with their cable or satellite company. Well, WMRT News' Mark Roper joins us now with the pros and cons of cutting the cord. So, Mark, if someone wants to do this, what's the best way to start this? Good morning, Megan and Christian. Well, yeah, if you're thinking of getting rid of your cable box and trading it in for a Roku or Apple TV, there are a lot of things to consider. Now, it can be confusing and a little bit of overwhelming at times even, but the first thing you really should ask yourself is, what do I want to watch on TV? Before deciding to get rid of cable or satellite TV service, CNET tech and media reporter Joan Salzman recommends cord cutters take a look at what's playing on their own TV. So the first thing to consider is what is the programming you are willing to pay for? And then the other thing is to consider is how can I get internet as cheaply as possible at the level that I need it. Like if you want to ditch cable but still watch the next big game. Sports are one of the most difficult kinds of programming to be able to cobble together with different streaming services. It definitely can be done, but if you're the kind of person that watches Sports Center every night and likes to know about lots of different sports, it's possible that just having to pay for that big bundle, the cable bundle, the satellite bundle, might still be the right thing for you. Cord cutters can pick a streaming service which offers programs on demand like Netflix, Hulu, or Amazon Prime, or choose one which offers live TV such as Philo, Fubo, Sling TV, as well as YouTube TV. And then you can also think to yourself, well, maybe I just want to cobble together. I just like watching dramas and some reality TV. Then you can think about maybe cobbling together multiple on-demand streaming services. That's the Netflixes, the Disney Pluses. And then, of course, you have to think about who's in my household, who's going to be watching those things. With so many choices, how do you choose? So if watching things live is important to you, then, and if you want to try to replicate what your cable service was, just not dealing with a cable or satellite company, then looking at those live channels is the way to go. If you're somebody that doesn't really care about live stuff, then you can look at those on-demand services that people most associate with streaming. And as far as saving money... Hulu offers a bundle with Disney Plus and ESPN Plus. Buying a new Apple product like an iPhone or iPad comes with three months of free Apple TV Plus. And if you don't mind watching commercials, ad-based plans are cheaper than ad-free plans. Exploring your options and considering all the pros and cons could take some effort, but the payoff could be worth it. So now we have more consumer choice and the downside of that is it does require a lot of work to figure out what works for you, how much you want to pay for hardware, how much you want to pay every month for services, what's not worth paying for at all. And that does come at a price, not only to your wallet and also to your time. Now, CNET recommends speeds of 10 to 20 megabits per second for those streaming services, but you also want to check with the streaming services that you want to sign up for just to make sure that you do have the right speed if you do decide to go the route of cutting cable. And then once you start signing up for streaming services, another thing that you want to remember is that there are no contracts unlike cable. So that gives you a great opportunity to try things out. You can maybe look for a 30 day, 30 day trial, try that service out, see if you like it or not. And if you don't, you can cancel it and sign up for another one. Reporting live, Mark Roper, WMAR2 News. Yeah, certainly a lot of options to think about, Mark, but when isn't cutting the cord maybe the best option for someone? <laughs> well, what you want to do if you are thinking about cutting the cord, I know I did this myself, you want to take a look at all the things that you want to watch, take a look at the different streaming services that you want to sign up for, and make a list and add them up and see if the cost of all those services that you might want to sign up for actually is cheaper than cable. Another thing you can do just decide about uh, what you do want to watch. If all you really are concerned about is watching local channels like, like us, WMAR2 News, you can just get an HD tuner, and that only costs about $25 to $40, and that's pretty cheap. All right, lots of good options there. Mark